The air grows cold. A chill crawls down your spine. You hear it then. A whisper in the darkness. A name. Paimon. It hangs in the air, heavy with dread and ancient power. This is no ordinary name. It is a word that has haunted humanity for centuries. A name whispered in hushed tones by occultists and demonologists. But who or what is Paimon? Paimon is no mere demon. He is a king among them, a powerful entity commanding legions from the infernal abyss. His name echoes through grimoires and ancient texts, a testament to his enduring influence. To speak his name is to invite the unknown, to step across the threshold into a world of shadows and ancient power. Why does the mention of Paimon elicit such fear and fascination? What mysteries swirl around this ancient entity? Join us as we delve into the depths of forbidden knowledge, peeling back the layers of history and myth to unveil the mysteries of King Paimon, the Demon King. Paimon's roots snake back through time intertwining with ancient beliefs and forgotten lore. His name, some scholars believe, might be a corruption of the Egyptian deity, Apep. Apep, the serpent of chaos, embodied darkness and destruction, a fitting parallel to Paimon's fearsome reputation. Others trace his origins to the fallen angels, cast down from heaven, alongside Lucifer. In these tales, Paimon emerges as a high-ranking lieutenant in the Infernal Army, his power rivaling that of Satan himself. Regardless of his true origins, Paimon's presence looms large in the annals of demonology. He is most famously documented in the 17th century grimoire, The Lesser Key of Solomon. This text, a cornerstone of demonology, describes Paimon as one of the most powerful demons, second only to Lucifer himself. The Lesser Key outlines Paimon's abilities, his legions, and even the rituals required to summon him. Imagine, if you will, a throne of burning bronze. The metal glows with an intense heat almost as if it were alive, pulsating with an otherworldly energy. Upon it sits a figure of immense power, a presence that commands both fear and respect. This is Paimon, the Demon King, a being whose very name sends chills down the spine of those who dare to speak it. His appearance is not fixed, shifting and changing depending on the will of the observer. However, certain constants remain, anchoring his terrifying visage in the minds of those who witness him. The Lesser Key of Solomon describes Paimon as appearing as a man with a most glorious crown upon his head, a crown that signifies his royal status among demons. His face, however, is far from human. It is a visage that defies the natural order a face that seems to be carved from the very essence of nightmares. Some accounts depict him with the snarling visage of a wildcat, its eyes burning with infernal fire, a gaze that pierces through the soul. Others speak of a serpentine face, scales shimmering like obsidian, a forked tongue tasting the air for fear, a creature born from the darkest depths of the abyss. But the most consistent detail, the one that sends shivers down the spines of even the bravest souls, is the crown. It is an artifact of immense power and dark majesty. It is said to be crafted from the horns of beasts, each spike radiating an aura of raw, untamed power a testament to the countless creatures that have fallen under his dominion. This crown is not merely decorative, 
It is imbued with ancient magic, a relic that holds the essence of Paimon's strength and authority. It is a symbol of Paimon's dominion, a reminder of the untamed forces that lie at his command, forces that can bend reality itself to his will. The crown is a beacon of his eternal reign, a mark of his unyielding power. Section 4, The Language of Power, Symbols and Sigils. In this chapter, we delve deep into the enigmatic world of symbols and sigils, exploring their profound significance and the mysteries they hold. In the world of the occult, symbols hold immense power. They are not mere drawings or carvings, they are imbued with energy and meaning, acting as conduits to realms beyond our physical world. They are the keys that unlock hidden doorways, the language through which we communicate with forces beyond our understanding. Each symbol carries with it a history, a story, and a purpose, often shrouded in secrecy and mysticism. King Paimon, like all powerful entities, has his own set of symbols. These symbols are not just identifiers, but are believed to be imbued with his essence, making them potent tools for those who seek his favor. The most well-known of these is his sigil, a complex geometric design found in the Lesser Key of Solomon. This ancient text is a treasure trove of occult knowledge, and Paimon's sigil is one of its most intriguing entries. This sigil, often inscribed within a circle, is believed to be a conduit to Paimon's power. The circle acts as a boundary, containing the energy and focusing it, making the sigil a powerful tool in rituals and invocations. To gaze upon it is to invite his attention, to open yourself to his influence. It is said that those who can truly understand and harness the power of the sigil can gain insight and guidance from Paimon himself. Another symbol associated with Paimon is the camel. This might seem unusual at first, but it holds deep symbolic meaning. This unlikely association stems from ancient beliefs about the camel's ability to navigate vast, unforgiving deserts. The camel represents endurance, guidance, and the ability to find a path where none seems to exist. Just as the camel guides travelers through treacherous terrain, Paimon is said to guide his followers through the labyrinthine paths of the occult. His guidance is sought by those who wish to traverse the complex and often perilous journey of esoteric knowledge. These symbols, imbued with centuries of belief and fear, serve as a stark reminder of the very real power that King Paimon holds. They are not just marks on a page, but are living embodiments of the ancient and potent forces that shape our world. Section five, at the crossroads, summoning the king. The rituals to summon King Paimon are not for the faint of heart. They demand unwavering focus and a strong will, for the path is fraught with peril. These rituals are steeped in ancient tradition, shrouded in secrecy and fraught with danger. Only those with true courage dare to proceed. According to the Lesser Key of Solomon, summoning Paimon requires meticulous preparation. Every detail must be perfect, every symbol drawn with precision. The ritual must be performed at a specific time under a specific alignment of stars. The heavens themselves must be in harmony for the summoning to succeed. The summoner must be protected, surrounded by a circle of power to ward off any malevolent entities. This circle is a barrier, a shield against the unknown. Offerings must be made, sacrifices designed to appease the king and ensure his cooperation. These offerings 
are tokens of respect, symbols of the summoner's dedication. The consequences of failing to properly appease Paimon are dire. The summoner must tread carefully, for one misstep could lead to disaster. He is known for his quick temper and his penchant for punishing those who dare to summon him without the utmost respect and reverence. His wrath is swift and unforgiving. Even if the ritual is successful, communicating with Paimon is no easy feat. His presence is overwhelming. His voice a whisper in the darkness. He is said to speak in riddles and metaphors, testing the summoner's wit and resolve. Each word is a challenge, each phrase a puzzle to be solved. Despite the dangers, some are still drawn to the power Paimon offers. They are captivated by the promise of knowledge and the allure of forbidden power. They seek his knowledge, his guidance, and his ability to grant their deepest desires. To them, the risk is worth the reward the danger a necessary evil. But be warned, the price for such power is often higher than one can imagine. The cost is not just in material offerings, but in the very essence of one's soul. 